Hey, everybody. Welcome to our Friday hey. edition of Real Pastors and another episode today that we have for you that we are excited to do because we have a whole new, you know, we, we built a new segment for us to do and we're happy to be going back to it. And we are doing another Let Us Explain. Let and us this explain. is, yep. And this is, again, Let Us Explain is when we come in and we take movies that we personally like and we think don't get the, the respect they deserve. They we get way too much hate. And we're trying to come in to explain to you all why the movie that we're talking about is a good movie and why you should mm -hmm. check it out and why you should hopefully come to our side and enjoy said movie as well. We are the first line of the fence for the first for the worst movie reviewers in the universe. We are coming here to explain why we love a certain movie. That mm -hmm. uh, you know, this movie we're talking about today, it is not hated. It's just not appreciated yeah. as much as it should, you yeah. know. Um, and I think it should get more credit because it is a very well done movie and it's a great story. Mm -hmm. It is. <clears throat> so without further ado, we are going to be letting us explain MIB three, and so yeah. which stands for Men in Black three. That's and that's the men in. That's the men in black. Men in black. Yes. And that's what we are explaining. And here we go. Here is you know I found the. The good poster here, Gary. Not right on. Yeah. And uh, and this movie, when it came out, I mean, did have a lot of hype. And the first one, you know, did very well. The second one was okay, but it did build on the world a little bit. And then this third one comes out, still had a lot of hype, and uh, especially because of that cast, that trio right there, if you mm -hmm. will. Um, mm -hmm. Josh Brolin, you know, playing Agent K, and then of course Tommy Lee Jones playing him, re reprising his role as Agent mm -hmm. K in it, and. Uh, and I will say the first thing that I think people need to get past, Gary, and I think you'll agree with this. If you've seen our Loki episode that was popped up on there, too, if you guys have seen that, we talked all about time travel and stuff. And you mm -hmm. and I, we appreciate movies about time travel. Yeah, We appreciate the time hopping. But there's a lot of people that when time travel comes up, they like to check out. And I They're think done. that's what happened with this movie for a lot mm -hmm. of people. And, and again, sorry, I know I said time travel. If for some reason you haven't seen this, spoiler alert. But this movie's been out forever. It came so, out in 2012, so you know what? We can spoil it. Yeah. Um, if you want to go watch it and come back, you know the rule. Just watch it, but then come back. You know? Yes. Um, yeah. So I am all about doing time travel well. And mm -hmm. how a movie, how a TV show, whatever you call it, does time travel well is when it explains the repercussions of said time travel. And this movie does that well, in my mm -hmm. opinion. Um, yeah, but like I said, we got Josh Brolin one of the most underrated actors in the world, yes. in my opinion, Tommy Lee Jones, a national treasure, another national treasure. We got Will Smith doing Will Smith things in this movie. Oh, he's yeah. got the one liners. He's hilarious. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it, I, I've never understood why even fans of the first, the first movie don't like this movie. They don't, you know, mm -hmm. just, it's just kind of like, eh, I, I've, I remember leaving the theater. I went and saw a man, Sherry, my cousin, Josh, and I was, we were, we were all huge Will Smith fans, all men in black fans. And I got home and just, there was just no buzz about this movie. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's the best way. It's just, there's just no buzz. Yeah. You yeah. know? And if this was like the ninth movie in the franchise, I'd understand, but it's the third. It should mm -hmm. still be excitement, you know? Yes. Um, but, but yeah, I've always appreciated it. It sits on my shelf because thanks to Amazon, uh, putting it on sale, I have the collection now, Good. and uh, watched it today. Looks great in 4K, oh, you know. Okay. And uh, can't wait to go back and watch the first one, and I'll probably watch the second one too. Yes, I don't hate it, but yeah, you know. But yeah, the time travel thing. Don't let that keep you from watching this movie or enjoying this movie. Just take it for what it is. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Um, yes, and I so. will say that what I, what I appreciated what they did with this time travel movie is that they brought up so the main dude, which I forget his name, the main little dude alien that he's like toting around trying to protect because he has the mm -hmm. I forget the name of the thingy uh, that protects yeah. the world. Um, yeah, but I like Griff. how he Griff yeah, Griff, yeah, yeah. So I, I I like that Griff is straight up like he can see into mm -hmm. all the different realities, right? Because this yeah. is this is time travel, but also based. This is time travel, also based on. If you ever seen Community, you know if, mm -hmm. if you make one decision, then yeah, it spews it spews into different realities. Because now, if you made one decision, now another reality has to exist where you made the other decision, right? So yep. of course, this is all scientific theoretical stuff that I can probably get a little too nerdy on, maybe too nerdy for the show, but um, 
But yeah. at any rate, he can see all those things, right? But he still can't mm-hmm. tell them what's going to happen. They still have to make their own choices. Mm-hmm. And um, and even though he has to go back in time, you know, you, you don't have to deal with all the back to the future stuff where it's like, mm-hmm. hey, we need to we need to deal with um, like you don't make sure you don't. Uh, cr- go, come cross paths with your former selves. Make sure you yeah. don't. There's not all these rules. It's literally like, hey, go back, find K, fix whatever mm-hmm. happened, because yep. they have no idea. Because Will Smith, he has a he has a falling out with K because he's trying to figure out like, why'd you pick me? Why are you so hard on me? Why are you like this? Like, so they have you mm-hmm. know what what uh, partners do. Um, you know, you know that they're like they've worked together for a long time, and he wants to get deeper. He won't. And of course, that all comes to fruition at the end, which we'll explain later. But mm-hmm. he has that. He goes to sleep. He wakes up the next morning. Everything has changed. He doesn't know why. He finds out the timeline got messed up. He's got to go back and fix what happened. And he has to go back. What was it? 1960? Was that? Uh, 69, because I remember it was like 69 right. because because of the Mets won the World Series. Or, you know. Ah, um, that's right. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I love how he was physically affected by it. You know, mm-hmm. I did think it was random that he, he had to have chocolate milk. Yeah. Um, you know, have you have you always craved uh, dairy, uh, chocolate dairy products? You know, yeah. that's what she says. But yeah. um, yeah, he was physically and then going into MIB headquarters and no one knows who Agent K was just created some hilarious moments. Will yes. Arnett's his partner, <laughs> Lego Batman yeah. himself. <laughs> uh, that's right. You know, and, and, and uh, I loved his I loved his. Uh, come on, Agent K by Yay Tall. He smiles like this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that was great. It's great Will Smith stuff in this movie. Um yeah. and then uh and then can we just hats off to Josh Bolin who does a spot on take on of Tommy Lee Jones. Like mm-hmm. I it's totally believable that's a young Tommy Lee Jones right there. Yeah. You know? How do you know my yeah. name? You know, it's just like it's just like it was so good. Yeah. You know, it brought well, what I loved about it too is that he had to and this is where I think people didn't appreciate what Josh Brolin did is that not he had to act as a character, but he had to act as that character uh, uh, um, according to what another mm-hmm. actor has made that character, <laughs> you yeah. know. So like, there's like layers yeah. on this thing that he had to do. Yeah. Exactly, it's like yeah. So he the fact that he exception. Ah, see, there you go. Mm-hmm. But that's what, but that's that's what makes his the fact that he did his role so well even more impressive to me. Mm-hmm. Because oh yeah, no doubt. Because Tommy Lee Jones created that character. So now he has to be that same character, but the way Tommy Lee Jones created it. And you know how hard it is to impersonate another actor doing that job. I mean, just look yeah. at just look at the uh, um, the Joker situation, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, when when Heath Ledger came in, Christopher Nolan told him, "I'm not trying to do Jack Nicholson. You need to do your version of the Joker because it's mm-hmm. so hard to replicate that without it feeling cheesy." And mm-hmm. the fact that Josh Brolin did knockoff. this, yeah, yeah, and he did this, it didn't feel like a knockoff. It felt mm-hmm. like no, he still made this his own, but did it right to do justice to what Tom Lee, G- Lee Jones has done in two movies. Even the mannerisms as the character of K, he had down pat. The way he walked, you know, it was yeah. just the way he sat at the diner. It was like, you know, he smiled a little bit more because you know it's like the whole like what happened to you. That's what he keeps saying. Right. And, uh, I just love that whole dynamic of uh, Will Smith seeing Young K and just being like, well, you you were happy once, you know. Right. <laughs> uh, yep. But yeah, this and and you know, can we <laughs> to, to go back to uh Andy Warhol is an undercover MIB agent? How hilarious is that? Yeah, <laughs> you know, I can't do this anymore. Bill Hader is in this movie, yeah. you know, hilariously portrays an undercover Andy Warhol. I can't tell the girls from the men, the men, yeah. the girls from the men apart. <laughs> this is hilarious, you know, right? Um, but uh, but yeah, I mean, just I like I said. I just want to explain. Like I said, we're explaining this. This movie's yeah. funny. It's an interesting story. In my opinion, it's more interesting than the second one. And uh, not as good as the first one. I think the first one still takes the cake on the best of the three, in my opinion. Right. Um, but it's just, it's a great third movie of the trilogy, you know? So, uh, like I said, it's got Will Smith, hilar- hilarious moments, his one liners, Tom Lee Jones doing Tom Lee Jones things. And it's a great story. And uh, oh, one thing we didn't talk about, ever not to step out, is the villain in this movie. I think is is pretty great. Uh, Boris the animal shoots things out of his hand. You know, shoots these wooden spike things, whatever you call it, out of his hand. And uh, he's going to get Agent K because he's been on a moon prison. 
he escaped from a moon prison. That's why I was talking about the villain. Mm -hmm. You know, escaped from a prison on the moon. I mean, that's pretty impressive. You know, yeah. I thought the villain's pretty great. This movie, Boris Animal, looking like a uh, Macho Man Randy Savage. Yes. You know? uh, but, uh, but yeah. So I just, yeah. Like I said, and he, I've and never he's understood why reason. people didn't like this movie more. Sorry. Yeah. And he's the whole reason. And I thought, like, he was, it was a good, even for a villain, I thought it was good because, yes, he was a villain, right? Yes, he wanted mm -hmm. to destroy the earth. But the thing is, because of the events of what Kay did in 1969, it destroyed his people, right? Mm -hmm. Now, granted, there's again, don't feel sappy. They, they were all bad, but they destroyed yeah, yeah. his people, and he was coming in to have vengeance, right? And so, like, so he had not only was he put in prison, but he has a personal vendetta against K and against the world because his entire population mm -hmm. got wiped out. And so, mm -hmm. like, it's not a sappy thing, but at least it's like a, you can see why he had to go back into time and do this. And, and you understood it and you're like, all right, like this guy means business. Like he's going to be tough to beat. And so you, you understood, you know, his motivation and where he wanted to go. And, and there was no other place to go except in the past because that's the only place you can fix it. And of course, when you're yeah. dealing with an alien movie, anything, time travel, anything is, is possible. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's like, I never get it. It's like time travel. Eh, but have you seen the other movies, what they do, you know? Yeah. <laughs> you know, speaking of the other movies, some nice callbacks to the other movies in this mm -hmm. you know we got the the picture of frank you know yes. who he Rest was missing in this movie yeah he was missing in this movie but that was a nice nod to frank the, over mm -hmm. will smith's bed you know yeah um but uh but yeah i mean the motivation of the villain was uh like you get it, you you understood it you know mm -hmm. and he was a bad guy don't get me wrong but he's got a vendetta yeah so and then of course you always had so you had that issue but then you also had the issue of, you know, Will Smith, like he knows what happens and all that kind of stuff. But now he has to come in and convince this younger K to believe mm -hmm. him. And really, like it took forever for this younger K to like actually like say, OK, this guy's legit. You know, I mean, like I mean, you saw moments where he kind of let it happen to see because he got some things right, you know. But I remember that point where he said, OK, and he was like, OK, really? Like now you believe me? And he was like, this is the first honest thing you've said this whole time. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so, which is a very K thing to do, mm -hmm. but, um, but just having even that same struggle. And then, you know, Will Smith trying to be like, uh, Will Smith was trying to be like, you know, he's used to kind of being in charge, but not really, mm -hmm. you know? And mm -hmm. so he knows what he needs to do, but K this younger K still treating him as a kid. And yeah. it's just like, are you kidding me? Yeah. <laughs> you know? So yeah. even seeing that dynamic made for some pretty funny stuff. Well, that scene where he explains everything that's going on and he's just like so like intense and like rushed mm -hmm. and he just goes, all right, okay. And yeah. It reminded me of the first one where Will Smith runs down the street and like jumps over cars and stuff and Tommy yeah, Jones yeah. just walks down the stairs and just slowly gets in the car and starts driving, mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> so. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, there, there was some pretty good like character development and I know you're big on character, Gary. Oh, no doubt. Like, character no doubt. stuff. Um, yeah. You saw Will Smith's character really, really grow. Um, you saw the young K grow as well, mm -hmm. just because mm -hmm. he had to learn um, to let go a little bit more um, mm -hmm. and to be able to, to trust people a little bit more. Now, granted, he was different because there was, you know, he did smile and have a little bit of fun. And, and Jay mm -hmm. was like, what happened to you, man? Mm -hmm. What happened to you? Which brings me to the ending, because that's mm -hmm. what happened to him. And I thought it was great that they were able this to a tie full in. Full circle. Yep, there to the go. very beginning, to everything. Mm -hmm. And because uh, mm -hmm. what you got to remember too is at the beginning of this movie, part of the fallout is Kay wouldn't tell him the full truth, mm -hmm. and that's why Agent J was upset. It was above and his then, pay grade. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. And so that's where I thought it got really interesting. And maybe you know what do you, what what did you think about it? Like, what were your thoughts when they? And you can say it if you want of how they brought it full circle. Oh, I mean, I thought I remember sitting in the theater. And I'm so into – and that's the other thing about this movie that I think is really well done. The ending is great. They're at the launch of, you know, uh, the guys going to the moon. I'm, I'm completely mm -hmm. butchering my American history knowledge right now because the name of – all that escapes me. Uh, right. But they're there present. And what do you know is Will Smith – young Will Smith is there with his dad who is a – I guess he's a Marine or somebody, you know. Army something. And, uh, yeah, his dad helps – um, Tommy Lee Jones and older Will Smith uh, save the world. And mm -hmm. then in, in doing so, Boris the Animal kills him. And then 
we see young Will Smith get out of his car in such a really heartfelt moment as a dad. It was really heavy. And you didn't see you it know? coming. No. That's uh-uh. that's what I loved no. about it. Like you had you had this general or whatever he was, and you just mm-hmm. saw him and you're like, okay, cool, this guy's helping. This is awesome. Mm-hmm. Like, no big deal. And like you said, he gets killed. Kay's upset. Upset because a guy helped him, you know, because Kay doesn't mm-hmm. want anybody to die, right? Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, that's yeah. just his character. And then, like you said, and then the kid comes out of the car. Where's my daddy? And at that moment, it's just like, oh yeah, I remember saying theater, like, oh holy cow. And then, and then it's revealed to us, Men in Black fans, that Kay has been watching him his entire life, watching mm-hmm. out for him, and that is why he was recruited. He's been being recruited to Men in Black since he was what six years old, you yeah. know. So it all just makes sense, you know. Yeah. And uh, and Jay was yeah. there to watch it unfold. Mm-hmm. And, th- and that's the thing that I thought was also beautiful was he was there to watch it. He he heard Kay say, your daddy died a hero. Mm-hmm. Right. Like that's he heard him say after that. He, after he flashy thinged him. <laughs> yeah. 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 And yeah. that and that, exactly. And that's all he needed to know. He saw that moment. And then so and then like even for us, M- like MLB, MIB, sorry, MIB mm-hmm. fans, like we go back and we're like, OK, now now those lines of like, what is it with this kid? Like mm-hmm. when Zed was like, what is it mm-hmm. with this kid? Like, why do you want him so bad? He's mm-hmm. like, uh, he chased down a whatever type of alien on foot. Kids got skills. Yeah. And it was just kind of like a line where you're just kind of thinking, really? Like, yeah. that's that's your reason? Like, that doesn't make mm-hmm. a whole lot of sense. But sure, movie's got a movie, I guess. And then mm-hmm. this makes those lines and those moments in the first Men in Black all count. And mm-hmm. the fact that he was like, no, I want him to be my partner. Like, mm-hmm. it just brings it all full story. It ties the full story together. Yeah, like he was literally training his replacement for 40 years. Mm-hmm. You know, I, know, I thought it was, just, it was just very good storytelling, in my opinion. Um, the, the ending scene when he comes back and they're sitting at the diner, he just casually says, he puts the watch on the table and says, I just want to say thank you. He's mm-hmm. like, it's been my privilege. And I was like, that's good. You know, yeah. wasn't over Beautiful. the top, wasn't a uh, slow motion running together, hugging moment. It was just, just want to say thank you. Yeah. And, and they moved on yeah. and the movie ended. Yeah. And, and I love that. I love that he didn't even have to be like, mm-hmm. man, I saw it. I went back in time. I saw it. No, he didn't explain. He just man to man. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Tom Lee Jones knew what was going on. He's like, it's been my privilege. And, and, you know, and going back to what you're saying, because I was, I watched this movie today. It's the first time I've watched it in years. Uh, and, and first off, I just want to say, I thought to myself, am I not going to like it as much? And I liked it even more, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, but, when Griff shows uh, the general, you know, Will Smith's dad, Jay's dad, mm-hmm. you know, why he needs to help, I start to, I start watching him to say, okay, is it going to give it away now that I like know it? And he doesn't like you. I thought maybe he's going to take time and just stare at Will Smith, which would have given it away, you know. Right. But he never once, you know, he all he says was he just showed me how important you are and how important this is, you know. Yeah. And. Uh, like I said, big, and that just creates a really great moment where you just have that revelation of, oh, nice, mm-hmm. see you. And uh, so, yep. Yeah. Ethan Cohen was the writer of this movie, and hats off to him of the Cohen yes. brothers. Yes, so. hats off to him. I mean, finishing off a trilogy like this is not easy, mm-hmm. and it's not something that that anyone would really want to take, you know, solo. I guess, but he took it. He mm-hmm. did a great job. And I think that's what people, I think me personally, it just seems like, because I always hear the, I just don't like the time travel stuff. And I think that people couldn't get past the time travel thing to see how the full story unfolded, how the character arcs, you know, came full circle, the story came full mm-hmm. circle. And I just thought it was a, just, again, it's a beautiful way to end mm-hmm. this whole trilogy and this whole storyline. And I think if people are just able to to put away their their negative bias on time travel movies because mm-hmm. time travel doesn't make sense. Well, first of all, you're watching a movie about giant aliens and humans blowing them up. <laughs> so let's not get too carried away. Yeah, come on now. But if you yeah. can get past that and see the full story that is being told, I think people mm-hmm. would appreciate it a whole lot more. Yeah, no doubt. And uh, I ha- before we close, I have some movie fun facts f- about Men in Black 3 I'd like to share uh, via IMDb. Uh, when a young Agent K, Josh Brolin, first appears, he says, we'll take it from here. And that's the first line K says in Men in Black 1997. Ah, there we go. Shea Stadium, which also appeared in Men in Black 1997, had to be recreated through CGI for this movie as the stadium was demolished in 2008. <laughs> and uh, young Agent K is wearing a watch that will <laughs> become the light source of the Grand Central Station locker, the creatures in Men in Black mm. 2. This can be seen clearly when young <laughs> Agent K and Jay are having pie. Uh, with the Mets 
before the Mets fans. And yes, which, oh hell, Jay. Oh, in my Jay. opinion, the best part of Men in Black too. Oh hell, Jay. Yes. Oh Jay, can, can you, you see? see? And uh, there was one more I can't remember, but yeah, just some nice fun facts here. Yeah. You know? So showing even more the detail they went through mm-hmm. to make sure this movie wrapped up everything nicely with a yep. nice little bow and said Merry mm-hmm. Christmas. And when they get on those weird 60s men in black motorcycle things, you see mm-hmm. the, uh, the UFOs from the first one outside of Shea Stadium in Queens. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I saw those in the background. So yeah, I like a nice callback. You know me. Yep. So And they did a good job. And this is – and again, this this movie deserves more respect. If you're no watching doubt. us right now and you're like, man, you know what? Maybe maybe you guys convinced me. Maybe I'll go back and watch it. Man, go mm-hmm. back and watch it. And if you haven't seen the the first one, especially, Check if you haven't out, seen yeah. the first one in a while, watch that first, then watch the third one. Yeah, well, you know, the second one is watchable. I just yeah, yeah. it's it's just nowhere near as good. And, and and I was just sitting here thinking, what is it about the second one that it just misses? One, it's a giant Burger King commercial. And yeah. two is it, it doesn't have the heart that this one and the first one has. It's just, it's just, it's just, it's just missing. You know, there is funny. Yeah. It's got some funny moments. Will Smith, Tommy Lee Jones, you know, uh, the, like we said, all hell J, but anyway, we're not talking about that movie, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, men in black three, give it a chance. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. Men in black two, they definitely focus more on the, the comedic side of things, mm-hmm. but a decent story. You know, yeah. and it was really much just Agent J coming, you know, doing a better job of being in charge, coming to his own, all that kind of stuff. So, like, mm-hmm. they, they focused more on that, but it was more the comedic side of things. Mm-hmm. Like, so Gave John Knoxville way too much to do. Yes. <laughs> Not maybe. Way too much. Way too much. So, but I'm glad they went back to the heart of it all mm-hmm. with this third yeah, one. And that's probably a good way to put it is this movie just has a whole lot of heart. And that's it why it needs, it needs to be watched again by you. Hopefully we've convinced you to watch Men in Black 3 once again. Mm-hmm. And as we sign off, I'm going to pull up the Amazon music machine and I'm going to listen to the Men in Black theme song because that song takes me back. Hmm. Man, I'm going to have to do that too. Yeah. So Big Willie style. Uh, yeah. <laughs> as we uh, – Oop, hit the mic. As we – and one more thing before we head out here, we actually have – Oh, yeah. Very, we do have an announcement. We do have a very, very fun announcement is that – we are now, I mean, a couple of people have said it to us, um, uh, said like, hey, why don't you guys set up a podcast? And you know what? We finally did it. We finally yes, have we set did. up a, a, a podcast. We are now on Spotify and Apple podcast. I don't know what, the, maybe iPod, I don't know what the heck they're called. But either way, we're on both platforms. There we are. There we are. You can subscribe. go in, subscribe to us on there, listen to us whenever mm-hmm. your heart says, I need some real pastors in my life. There we are. It will be yep. uploaded, you know, when we do reviews, everything, just like we do here on YouTube. If it's mm-hmm. on YouTube, it's on the podcast. Check us out, follow us, subscribe, do whatever, and you can listen to us whenever you, you would like. Like Gary, he likes yeah. to listen to podcasts during dishes. Maybe you can All do the time. same. Yep. Check us out. Hopefully, we'll make your chores, your driving, whatever you want to call it, whatever you do when you listen to podcasts. When put us in your earbuds and just do what you got to do because mm-hmm. we're, we're we're there. And uh, I'm excited to be a podcast. Yep. So very, very exciting stuff. So check us out on there and uh, we'll keep plugging it uh, just to make sure you heard that we are on Spotify and Apple podcast. Thank yep. you guys so much for joining us today. Hopefully we have convinced you to give men in black three, a second chance. And we are looking forward to seeing you guys again next week with some kind of movie stuff. We'll see. Yeah. Some we kind of movie stuff. Indeed. Yeah. We got to keep you yeah. guys on your toes. Dang right. So yeah. peace uh, out movie.